We serve an awesome God, y'all. I was um, in my readings this week, and I came across an old familiar story that I love, and uh, that's going to be the order of the day. It's, it's one of those scriptures that when you hear it, you'd be like, okay, yeah, I, I like this one. I like this one, and uh, it's one that speaks to us in everything that we do, right? So in order to understand exactly where God wants us, I need you to go to the third chapter of the book of Daniel. Everybody there? Say amen when you found it. Travel down to the 13th verse. So Daniel 3, beginning at verse 13. The Bible reads, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want to speak from the subject, consider the cost. Consider the cost. Father God, I pray now you'll me to the world, leave me there until I'm done. You understand the magnitude of the assignment way more than I do. Allow my word to take a back seat and yours to reign supreme. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Consider the cost. Every time I read this particular chapter, I'm, I'm moved. Moved me so much that I had to bring this particular message back. What you find is a lot going on in Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar has a firm rule. And there are people out there that are being elevated and blessed, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And there are folks who don't like that. 
And so they come up with this scheme in order to catch these young brothers slipping. This target was the three Hebrew boys. And they knew they couldn't get them any other way than to hit them where their faith was. That test of faith, right? You would wonder why would they be so faithful? Why would they be so loyal? Especially knowing that they are in slavery. They're in bondage. They've been captive. But yet somehow they're still worshiping God. We get in trouble and we lose sight of who God is. But these are young men, not old, well, seasoned, however you want to call it. They ain't senior citizens. They ain't seasoned. They ain't old. They ain't mature. These are young men in captivity but are being blessed while in captivity. And there are folks who see them who don't like how they're being blessed. But no matter what, they don't stop praising God. That's an issue. It's an issue for the world. It's an issue for folks outside of who you are. When they still see you praising God in the midst of the storm. No matter what's going on, you still have a praise on your lips. That's a problem for those who don't understand. And so these young men are trying to send us a message. And so this court scene is, is, is brilliant because you have all of the factions present, both good and evil. And in this scenario, evil outweighs the good. Here you have the king and all of his court and these three young men. And now the king speaks to you. You got to understand how powerful it is to have the king speak to you because you are just subjects. You, you're not important, but the king speaks and whatever the king says has to be done, has to be heard. You have to give respect to the king because of his position and his authority. And yet this king is calling these young men out. He said, I heard that you don't serve my gods. And so when the music plays, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do what the decree says you should do when you're in my kingdom. I'm going to give you an opportunity because I heard a rumor that when this music played, you wouldn't bow down to this golden image that was prepared for those who are followers to bow down to. And he's going through this discourse and these young men, they are listening. They're listening to everything he has to say. And after he finishes saying his kingly stuff, these young men, they respond. And so, you know, <laughs> I got to look at it because a lot of times people say, you know, young, young people, you don't know nothing. But when you follow Christ, you should know something. Because you can be an old person and know absolutely nothing. Especially if you're supposed to be following Christ, but you're not. So therefore, you don't even understand why you're in the position that you're in because you keep crying about the position that you're in. Not giving it to the Lord. Because you don't understand who the Lord is. But yet here these Young men whose lives, half the time, we, we go against the Lord and, and our life ain't even in danger. Just our feelings. Just our pleasures, our joys. These young men's lives is on the line. And so I'm wondering, man, 
How can y'all stand that firm and that bold and still trust God in the midst of you being enslaved? Why would you still hold? Because I, I mean, I, I know how we are in today's world. Lord, if you love me, I wouldn't be in slavery. If you love me, I wouldn't be in this position. If, if, if you love me, you, you would hear my cry. You would hear my plea if you love me. So why in the world would I continue to worship, to bow down before you, or even put my life on the line when you got me in this mess? This messed up situation. So before they speak, they have to consider the cost of everything they're about to say and who they are and whose they are. Many of us, we do things without considering the cost, the possibilities of what may happen or what may not happen if I don't engage the way I'm supposed to engage this conversation. How much power or non-power will I have? And remember, a power is just an illusion, right? Because the only power is the absolute power, which belongs to who? Amen. So you already know you really ain't got no power. But you must consider the cause before you speak against the system. <laughs> before you speak against your employee. Before you speak against your pastor, your church, your fellowship, your group, your organization, before you speak outside of that thought process, you better consider the cause. Because there will always be a price to pay. Many of us don't consider the cause. We speak words because we're angry. And we speak words that we don't really mean or want to say, but that's really what's on our heart. Why? Because we spoke it. See, it can't come out of you if it ain't in you. But there are some times that you need to keep some of the stuff in you, in you. Because you saying it does not have value or bring joy or anything of positivity to a situation. But because you want to do what you do, you still put it out there. Consider the cause. Because then when the repercussions come from what you have said, what you have done or did not do, then you got to be willing to take those consequences, right? So these young men, they listen to what the king has to say. And then they respond, not as young men, but as men who have considered the cost for what they are about to say. I love it, man. I love it because you, you don't have to be old to figure this thing out. You just got to believe in something that's bigger than you. In 15, he says, now if ye be ready, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, yada, 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 fall down, worship the image which I have made. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast that same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Who going to change their tone? Who going to change their tone? I mean, we say we believe in God. But do we really? Does our walk show it? Does our talk show it? Does the attitude show it? I mean, if you were faced with 20 to life, you hadn't done no wrong. Are you still going to worship? I believe there was a young man named Joseph. Still loved the Lord. But his life was tragic at best in the beginning. But he held on to something, a faith in God, a love for God, that no matter what was going on, I still knew that God did not forsake me. I didn't let my anger, my vengeance, dictate how I, be I behaved and how I was born. And he was truly wrong. 
You know, I think about Job. Well. Had the worst 24 hours, I think, than anybody has ever had other than Jesus himself. And yet, still held on. We dropped down and we ain't had nowhere near what's going on in some of these lives in these biblical stories that were meant to lift us, encourage, and strengthen us. But this one here is three young men with their life on the line. And all they got to do when the music play is bow down and worship this golden image and they would live. But sometimes living ain't worth living if you ain't standing for something that's bigger than yourself. We don't understand that because we, we, we don't have, we, never, we haven't been challenged like that. I wish we could go back and talk to some of our ancestors through slavery, through the civil rights march and movements and things of that nature because we don't understand because we have been too, our life is too easy. Somebody call you outside your name. I wish somebody would call me outside my name. You don't think they didn't feel like that? But they took it to better our lives today. And now we just spit back in it. The things that I see, the things that I watch, the things I see occurring, you know, it's, it's not even who we are as a people, but yet it's what's put out there. Because if I, if, if, if I was from an alien planet and I came here to Earth and, and, and I was hanging in the United States and I was looking at these colored folk and I would say, you know, what are they about? Well, if I watch media... I would say colored folk is about materialism, sex, violence, party. Y'all know we more than that. But that's all we see. And yet in the midst of that, I see these same folks giving honor to God. I want to thank the, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the gift. Really? He gave you that gift? To talk about anything and everything but him? But if I, if, I, if, I, if, if I don't say that, and I go against this, I'm not going to get my bag. I'm not going to get the money. I'm not going to be popular. I'm not going to be public figure because... I'm bucking the system. I go against what they say. Do you realize in order to be a preacher, you got to go against what the system says. And so if you're going to preach, you have to consider the cost because everybody is not going to want to hear what you have to say. As a matter of fact, they got these people now called council culturists. They swoop down like vultures. As soon as you don't agree with them, as soon as you don't say what they want you to say, but at the same time, they can say whatever they want to say. So when you consider the cost, you realize that when I open up my mouth, if it's not aligned with what you believe, then they're going to want to crucify me. Well, I guess I'm in good company. Because Jesus Christ considered the cost. But these young men could have been fearful of speaking out. They was young. Of course, God would forget. I'm like, I, you get a pass. You I understand you was frightened, you were scared. You, you don't realize who I really am. Right? We give them a pass. They, they young, they grow out of it. That's not how they felt. They was challenged. Their faith was challenged on the spot by public opinion, by the world, by leaders, by those with authority. They were challenged. Take your time. Answer these questions. <laughs> they said, look, 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 homie. We don't have to think about this one. We ain't 
we, we don't have to go to a sidebar. We don't have to be sequestered. We don't even have to come together because we've already come together as one. So I, when I speak, I can speak for all of us. I, we heard what you said, King. But let, me, let, let us just tell you this right now. That we will never. You know, do, you, do you know how strong the word never is? Never bow down. We will never lose sight of who our God is. We will never lose faith in who our God is. It doesn't matter that we're in captivity. It doesn't matter that folks are out against us. We know who we are. And we know who we belong to because we have considered the cause. So the only thing we're going to be careful of is how we respond before God the Father. Not man. Not the king. Not politicians, not preachers, not presidents, not folks who don't know who my God. I'm not concerned about what you think about what I'm about to say. I'm only concerned with what God thinks and knows about what I'm about to say because I remember some stuff that God brought me through. See, we, we, got, a, we got a short attention span, right? We love to focus on the negative stuff. But we won't focus on the positive. You ask somebody about some negative things in their life and they'll rattle it off. Oh yeah, I remember this, I remember that, I remember this, I remember that. You ask them about some positive, they'll be like, hmm, let me think about that for a minute. And the only reason is is because folks rehearse negativity. Marriages fall apart because of negativity. Not the positive stuff. And I promise you, There are way more positives than negatives, but we focus on the wrong thing. So God has blessed us, and yet we focus on the negative stuff. I don't have a job I want. I don't have a wife I want. I don't have a husband I want. I don't have the children I want. I don't have a job I want. I don't have the money I want. I don't have the right lottery ticket that I needed. I don't have cable. I don't have a stream. I don't have a mobile cell. I don't have a car I want. But yet you ain't focused on the fact that you got transportation. You ain't focused on the fact that there's a roof over your head. You ain't focused on the fact there was food on your table. You ain't focused on the fact there was clothes on your back. You ain't focused on the fact that even though you're at odds, somebody is still right here with you. You understand what I'm saying? We, 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 we don't consider the cause. We speak as if we don't understand all the blessings that God has given us. But these young men speak with the knowledge of knowing that God has blessed us. And they was just some teenagers. They haven't even lived as long as some of us have lived. So they said, okay, we, we, we ain't got to have no side. We, we, we ain't never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever, never, ever bow down before you or worship this golden image that you have presented. Because our God is able. I believe it was uh, Joshua and Caleb that said we should go over to the promised land because our God is able. If, if he's able, then we are more than willing to be able to conquer what he said we should conquer. And then you got those 10 negative folks telling me, no, nah, man, we but grasshoppers over there. They're going to destroy us. It's always the minority that listen and the majority that keeps going astray. And folks side with the majority. Why? Because they got the numbers. They must be right. These are three boys in the midst of a king's court and a king's council, and there is nobody pulling for them. Matter of fact, the king said, uh, crank up that furnace. It ain't like fire ain't enough to burn you. But let's make it seven times hotter. 
Come on, man. One time hotter is enough. I get burnt by a pot on the stove. I'm like, ah, God, dog it. And you're talking about seven times hotter? And yet these young men still stand firm and say, we will never. You can take it 14 times. You can put it on hell. We're not going to bow down before you because we know that God is able to do what? Deliver us. We know that we're doing something that's right. We know that we're in the right. We know that we should never bow down before no image and no graven image and no gold. We remember what our ancestors went through in the past. And so we know and we understand that we will never, ever bow down before this image because our God is able to deliver us. But <laughs> that's all fine and dandy, right? But here's the greatest part of their discourse <laughs> and I I, I I cry right now thinking about it when I read it I tear up I'm here preaching I'm tearing up because they hit the nail on the head you know it's easy to say you know God can deliver me but they then turn around and say but if not If not, that's okay too. We will never bow down. So do whatever you got to do because you ain't bigger than G-O-D. If it means I'm going to lay down my life, then I guess I'm going to have to lay down my life. How many of us would take that same stance? And I can't even sit there and tell you that I know if I would. I'm going to be honest with you. Stop preaching a gospel message or I'm going to throw you in this fiery furnace. Well, I ain't never been to a fiery furnace. But I know what heat feels like when I'm right next to it. Never forget a time when I was misbehaved when I was down in Virginia and uh, they had this big fire outside my grandmother's house and my dad had me staying close to that fire you know, say, you know, this would happen when you play with us, right? I, I had set my grandmother's bathroom on fire. Well, not her bathroom, but I was playing with matches, and I lit a piece of toilet paper, and the whole toilet paper went up, and in my panic, I threw it out the window, and it landed in the pool where my grandmother was, and she kept it secret for a long time until my brother spilled the beans at a family reunion. And next thing I know, I was getting a whooping some three, four years later about something that I had done. But he had me stand by a fire, and it was a huge fire, and I could feel the heat. Now, most of us don't like pain. And so we would try to avoid pain. And so it's, it's that point of, well... I, Lord, I'm, I'm going to reject you in front of them. But you know I ain't really rejecting you. I'm just trying to save my life. Can you imagine Jesus saying, I'm not going to die for them. I just want to save my life. Lord, let's act like I died. You know, because we can do that. But then you don't pay the price that God... I told you, you got to consider the cost. There is a price that must be paid. Somebody is going to pay it. And so I know that I would waver because my faith hasn't been taken through what they've gone through. Even when it comes down to, if you ask me versus, you know, Deacon Reg and, and, and they went through, and Reverend Palmer that saw the whole sewer right, I mean, you know, you, you can't drink out of a, a water fountain. You can't look at a, a white person. You, you, you can't walk without feet. You can't come down. You know, that, I don't know what that's like. But they do. They know how to handle adversity better than we do. And now that's just me. But our kids today, they don't know what adversity is. Because if they did, they wouldn't do half the stuff they, they do. 
but because they're being pumped with materialism, violence, sex, drugs, that's okay. I wish I would walk around with my grandmother with my pants hanging way down here. And my underwear is showing. No respect for her or the home or whatsoever. But because that's acceptable, that's okay. It's like, y'all don't understand. Well, no, I understand that I'm not following this world. That's what they were saying. I, I know it's right for y'all. I, I know y'all can bow down before this golden image, but it's not right for us. Why? Because we know who God is. I'm not trying to figure out who I am. I don't need to walk around like you. I don't need to sit here and sell my body or post my body. I don't need to pierce or, or tattoo it or mark it all up just to figure out who I am. I know who I am. I know who God made me to be. And so I'm going to stand on myself because we got enough carbon copies running around here. We don't have many individuals. We don't have many originals. These were three real OGs. Never bow down. But if not, whatever God decides to do, he'll do. Well, you know the world ain't going to like that, right? So the king, the Bible said the king was furious. I'm the king. You ain't going to tell me what you're going to do. You're just some little boys. Sound like Goliath, don't it? <laughs> you send this little child what am I, a dog? Come on, man. What is this kid going to do? Yeah. King is furious. He said, look, crank up the furnace. Throw him in. Yeah. Yo, but King, these are these kids. They don't know no better. Did, did the world care about that? You know how many of us go to jail because we don't have representation? We in the wrong place at the wrong time. How many innocent folks are in there because they don't know how or they can't defend themselves because they don't have the money, the resources, or the means because the system isn't designed for us to be successful, but yet we keep falling into the system of way of thinking? Instead of following God's path, instead of listening to your mom and dad say, don't go there, don't, don't hang with it, be careful who you hang with, be careful those things, pull your pants up, you know, cover your breast up. You understand what I'm saying? We, we, we trying to teach you, but you don't want to hear because the world says this. But then when you get trapped up with the world, then you're like, okay, Lord, I need help now. But these three said, no, first of all, we're not going to fall because we know God can keep us. But even if he don't, we still good. Crank up your furnace. We good. You good? I'm good. You good? I'm good. We don't know nothing about that. We ain't been challenged like that. We can't even come to Sunday school. Bible study. On time. Just to be aware of who God is. Even when it comes to church, we figure out, all right, I'll get there. Maybe I won't get there. I'll get there when I get there. Can you imagine if God said, you in the midst of trouble, and you need him right then? He said, well, I'll get there when I get there. But I can't breathe, Lord. I'm sorry. Right. I'll get there when I get there. I'm about to burn up, Lord. I'm sorry. Right. I'll get there when I get there. I'm in trouble, Lord. Right. I'll get there when I get there. I'm going to do you like you do me. But I'm so glad God ain't petty. I'm so glad he ain't like us. So they crank up the furnace. They make it hot. Throw them in. Now, you got you to hear this. The furnace was so hot yeah. Yeah. that those throwing them in burnt up. But there were also some that didn't burn up. Now, one time I, I preached it to the point where they had to jump in, but I, I was, I'm, I'm reading it. I'm reading a little bit further, you know, because I, if everybody burnt up, there had to be still somebody that was with them. That's what the Lord showed me this time. Somebody had to still be with them. So that means that somebody had the assignment to still do to get them into the fiery furnace, right? But yet there were some that burnt up. 
before they got there. So that means that those that didn't burn up was protected because they were walking with a child of God. And then when they seen the others burn up and they didn't, they didn't consider the cause. They didn't recognize that something supernatural was happening. They was only still fearful of the world. So, amen, Lord, okay. I mean, I like the first understanding where they kind of jumped in, they fell in because they still loved the Lord. I'm not still far from that, but I'm just saying on this one, I've seen the fact that they had to be still thrown in, but there's some who burnt up. So therefore, those who were walking with him that was going to fulfill the assignment had an opportunity to see God work, but they didn't listen. So because you got folks that walk with you, if you stay firm, they can see God working. And prayerfully, they will change their wicked ways and understand, like the centurion soldier said, surely this is the Son of God. Because he saw the scene. He saw what was happening. He saw what was taking place. He heard, and he like, surely. Do you understand how powerful that is? To come to a realization and a recognition in the midst of your storm? So here we have now these three Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace seven times hotter. Some folks have died, but let's just say some are still holding on and are about to still throw them in, even though they just saw Everything they saw, not one time did those three young men say, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute, King. I'm having second thoughts about this. I, I, I'll about to pull me back. I, I didn't see these folk burn up because remember, they're watching everything too. But they never once waver like us. See, we're good for our faith as long as things are working in our favor. But soon as something is working in our favor, then we get nervous. God, you must not be here. You must not be watching. You, you must not. Why are you allowing me to go through this? Why not you? Are you not prepared? Are you not a child of God? Are you not allowing me to be on the throne to be the God of your life? Are you not? So therefore, when I put you through something, apostles, Satan has a desire to sift you like wheat. Have you considered the cause of following Christ? Of what it means to be real and not fake? To understand your faith? To understand the works that you do mean something? To understand that the glory you give him means something? To understand that every time he wakes you up, you have to consider the cost of what it means to get up in God, not up in this world? Of everything that we owe him every day, not just when things are convenient for us, to preach in season and out of season, not to be moved by every wind of doubt. Have you considered the cost? Well, to reject him is to not be with him. You good with that? Are you good with rejecting God because you feel like the world will dismiss you? You, you know you're going to die, right? Oh, I can't guarantee much. But this I can guarantee you're going to leave here. One way or another, you're going to leave here. And unless you believe that life stops at death, you're in trouble. Because you're going one way or the other. you either going up or you're going down. Well, man, I, I, I don't believe that. You ain't got to believe it. Just die. <laughs> Because when you die, you're going to find out. 
Have you considered the cost of what it means to follow this world or to follow Christ? They did. And the Bible says that when they went into the furnace, the king, his majesty, wait a minute. I thought we put three in. How is it that I'm looking at four? How is it possible that I put three? What, did one of my guards go in with him? God didn't keep them out the fire. He kept them through the fire. Through the storm, through the pain, through the trouble, through the problems. See, he didn't keep them out of it. He didn't keep the, 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 the apostles out of it. He kept them through it. I need you to understand. He'll keep you through it. He can stop you from going in, but even if he don't, but if not, if I got to go through the storm, that's okay. Why? Because I know he still got me. He can either cover me or he can take me away from here. Do you understand what that means to consider the cause? Do you understand how these three young men had to know that they could be either delivered or burnt to a crisp? It was all in God's hands. That's what they said. They said, King, we ain't scared of you. We scared of him. And we know we can't bow down. That's one of the commandments. We know we can't bow down before no graven image. And so I know that God is able to keep us. And even if he don't, he still does. And the king, he said, my, 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 my. Did Shadrach, Meshach. And as my southern pastor would say, and a bad Negro. Yeah. Servants of the Most High. I need y'all to come out. I need y'all to come out because I'm not even believing what I'm seeing, but I need y'all to come out. And when they came out, you realize that while they were in the fire, while they were being tested, the chains fell off. The ropes burnt up. There was no smell of smoke. Nothing. But yet they came out unscathed, untouched. The king is in amazement. He's like, I, I. just imagine if you stand for God and what happens when you come from under that storm, the folks begin to look at you and see that you ain't broken down. You ain't all disheveled. You ain't all destroyed. Because you realize that you can only control what you can control. What I can't, I can't. That takes a process of daily walking with God. Because we all going to go through stuff. We all going to go through storm. We all going to go through our own personal fiery furnace. But while you're in that furnace, there are folk looking at you. And they want to see if what you was talking about was real. And if they see you walk through it, and they say, I, I thought you went in there by yourself. But, but it seemed like to me you got somebody with you. Well, the Bible declares, and we have access to this, that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so if I'm going to walk in that, that must mean that if I'm going to do what God has called me to do, I must consider the cost. Because in my actions, in their actions, people get saved. People see who God is. The king saw, keep reading. He saw who God was. He saw more than once. Dude, keep reading the whole story. He still has some issues 
until God brought him down. I believe when you get to glory, you're going to see King Nebuchadnezzar. But he, ain't, he wasn't no Israelite. He, he believed in God. He had faith. So I believe that when the captives got set free, he won them. Because after he came back from his little hiatus of being an animal, he called God who God was. God can use anybody. Can touch anybody. But he's using us to touch them. And if we ain't willing to go into the fiery furnace, why should they? If we're not willing to be who we say we are 24-7, not just when it's convenient, not just on Sunday morning, not just when you, you're looking for a photo op, then why follow? Why follow Christ? Them boys gave me something to follow. They said we'll take the good and we'll take the bad. Because they realize the bad ain't bad. Why? Because to be absent is to be present, which means I'm still good. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, considered the cost when he came from glory to see about us. Even at the point of humbling himself before a world that beat him so bad he was unrecognizable. Placed a crown of thorns on his head. Whipped him. Nailed his hands and feet to the cross. Hoisted him up in the air so that the whole world could see. Stayed there when he didn't have to. Y'all gotta understand, he didn't have to. But he stayed there because he considered the cost. He was receiving a gift for what he was doing. Us, you and I, all he asks us to do is to walk in his presence. Can you do that? Can you fulfill that? Do you understand how important it is for you to walk in him so that others might be able to see? The church is here for a reason. It is to lift up a dying world. But if the church is acting like it's dead too, then what are we all doing here? We might as well bow down before the graven image and call it a day and let the world dictate to us everything that we do and everything that we say. Why? So we can go along. To get along. That's not what I see in the text. And that's not what I saw on the cross. Even a thief beside him said, Lord, remember me. He took the time out to tell that man this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. How many of y'all going to stop y'all pain to see about somebody else's pain? Not many, if any. He set the precedent. So yeah, we come to church on Sunday. Why? Out of obligation? Or out of love? Yeah, we fall into Bible study in Sunday school. Why? Out of obligation? Or out of love? Because see, one day, we're all going to have to sit before the throne and give an account for everything that we've done. I don't want to miss that moment and realize I've wasted my entire life doing me versus doing him. I consider the cause. Every time I preach, every time I teach, every time I speak, every time I say, the things I do I have to consider because that's my brand. I got to protect my brand, right? So I got to be careful of what I say and what I do, especially when I'm out in the public because folks can see me and I don't want anybody to stumble if these boys had said, no, nah, we ain't going to do it, they would have stumbled. They would have caused everybody else to have the same weakness. But because, and the Bible don't go into it, but I promise you, from that scene and stuff, a lot of folks recognize, not, not just the king, but a lot of folks recognize who God was and is. Through your life, people are seeing who God is. Show them the right thing. Show them that you have considered the cause. 
show them that you understand the price that was paid for us to be where we are right now, for us to be and to do what God has called us to do. Because if you don't understand those things, you might as well bow down before the image. Because I promise you, you have not considered the cost. Those of the church are open this morning. <laughs>